Good afternoon, Teen Tech Club. It is I, Mr. Charles. Welcome back to another exciting episode of Teen Tech Club. Uh, if you're just joining me this week, if you missed last week, uh, for this month's topic, we are going to be dealing with lasers. Pew, 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 pew. Uh, not those lasers, but the library CO2 40 watt laser engraver. Um, this machine will allow me to burn, etch, and carve uh, bookmarks for you for summer reading. Uh, but before we begin uh, building, uh, we are going to learn how to design. So last week I also showed you a little bit of Inkscape. Uh, it's the design tool program um, that we're going to be using to make all these different types of graphics. Um, so today I'm going to... Um, just reintroduce some of those tools from last week and show you some other advanced tools so you can uh, desi design some images of your very own. So let's begin. All right, so here I am in Inkscape. Um, so for today's example, I'm going to um, I'll make an animal. Uh, I picked the panda bear for this one. Uh, I don't know why I keep picking bears, but... Uh, uh, proportionally and, and uh, aesthetically, they, they, they happen to be very uh, fitting for these examples. So um, we'll chop it up to science. All right, so um, actually, before I actually begin, now that I'm starting or trying to picture this panda in my head, uh, I realize that uh, I don't really have a good uh, image of what it looks like. Um, so if you are uh, non-imaginative and uncreative like me, you might need a template, uh, some guide to follow. So uh, here I just grabbed a picture from the internet. Uh, I'm uh, just going to put that off to the side, and it will be my subject for uh, this afternoon. Um, I'm going to try and recreate this panda as best I can. All right. So the first tool is the ellipse circular tool. I'm going to draw the face of the panda first. Um, now, if you want this to be um, a perfect circle, right, if you hold your control key right, and you move your mouse diagonally, perfectly diagonally, okay, you'll know that it's perfectly diagonal because your cursor will, you'll feel it kind of snap into place. And as you move your cursor, that circle should remain uh, proportionate in a circle and not an ellipse. So uh, I'm going to make the face a circle. Just the start. All right, and then again up here on the top left, the pointer will be your selection tool. It allows you to move, and uh, I'm going to show you some other um, controls that it has for us. But we'll start with that. So the circle now, I'm going to do a little color uh, adjustment on it. So on the bottom left here, we have fill and stroke. Fill is the inside color, and stroke is the border of the circle or any shape that you're dealing with. So. Um, if I double click on that, I will have the color menu open up. Uh, let's see, first thing is the stroke. I'm gonna add a border to this. So right now it says with, uh, it's close to nothing in millimeters. So the higher I make this, okay, the greater the stroke. And actually we can't see anything yet because the paint Okay, so when there's stroke paint here, um, we're going to choose this one here. Uh, it just gives a solid color. Uh, and then on the wheel here, whoops, as I move this around, you'll see that the stroke, the border, will start to change colors. I'm going to keep mine black uh, just because the pan is black and white. Uh, and then the fill, and actually now that we have a stroke, before I go to that fill, um, if I go to the stroke menu now, as I click the width downwards, you're going to see that uh, stroke, uh, the, the border sort of thin out. And uh, I'm just going to make it a little bit thicker again, so I'm going to bump it upwards. All righty, and that looks good. All right, so the next, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to fill, and we're going to change the inside color from red to, well, I guess there are red pandas, but. Um, I'm going to white. 
me a traditional traditional panda here. All right, so now that we have our colors set uh, for the face, uh, let's move on to another feature. So I'm going to go back to the ellipse, and I'm going to draw okay, another circle. All right, this one doesn't have to be perfect, but um, after we have the color, we're going to change the color to black for the ear. So in the fill, area, fill menu, I'm going to again drag the circle to black. And then we're going to move it over to where the ear might go. Okay, and if you notice, uh, as I click on this circle on the edges, these arrows allow me to scale it and resize it afterwards. So in case you ever want to change that size again, you can pull on these arrows here. All right, so I have one ear in place. But if you notice, compared to the example I have here, the, ear, the circle of the ear is actually cut in half. Um, so without actually having to cut it in half, I'm going to show you a, uh, a technique uh, using layering uh, in order to uh, make it appear that it is a half circle. So um, after I have the circle selected, if you look at the top menu here, or the top toolbar, uh, you're going to have these four up here that when you hover over them, it'll tell you what they do as well. Um, but the lower, this is lower selection to bottom, um, lower selection to bottom means it's going to put this shape at the very bottom, at the end of our uh, arrangement. So what this means is, as we add items or objects to our page, there is an order or an arrangement that is forming. Uh, so the first circle that I made was the face, and that became layer or object one. Uh, and then the ear that I made second is object two. So the newer objects you add will be the highest layer and they'll overlap uh, anything that's beneath it. Um, but in this case, I want the face to overlap the circle so that I can actually um, sort of cut it in half. So if I take the circle for the ear and I click on, okay, it says lower selection to bottom. Okay, now you see that it's behind it and as I move it, it'll stay behind it. So I can kind of use this effect to cut it in half, and it even has the same sort of arcing shape uh, that you see in the example here. So uh, use this technique if you need to uh, rearrange or reorder your objects. Now I want to make a second ear, and I want it to look about the same or exactly the same. So without having to draw a new circle or ellipse, I'm going to actually uh, copy and paste this one. Uh, another uh, easy way to copy and paste is to duplicate. So whether from your keyboard you do uh, Control D or Apple D or uh, from the menu, uh, which menu is that? One of these menus, I usually use the keyboard shortcuts. Sorry, let me find it. Here it is. So in Edit, you'll also see Duplicate, Control D. All right, so if I hit Control D or Duplicate, all right, it's going to create an exact identical copy of that. I'm just going to move it about where I want it to go. And then same thing like we did for that first year. We're going to lower the selection uh, and then putting it behind that uh, face. All right. All right, we got some ears. Next, let us make the, let's make the eyes or the, those black spots under the eyes. All right, so the first thing is I'm going to make an oval. Right, and again, we're going to make this oval black. And then what you can do next is, all right, if you take your pointer, your selection tool, and anytime you click in the center of the object, you're going to notice that the arrows on the outsides of them will change directions. They'll go from uh, outwards pointing arrows to circular arrows. Um, so the difference is scaling and rotating. So when they're pointing outwards, this allows me to change the size. Uh, but if I click in the center of the shape and now they're rotating arrows, that allows me to rotate the object. So I will take all right, this first eye, and that is way too big. So I'm going to click and scale it downwards. Oh, man, I hope this doesn't look too terrifying. I used to like pandas, but this might give me nightmares soon. All right, let's see. Eh, not bad, not terrible. 
Uh, we'll stick with that for now. And there's a second one. So instead of having to fool around with another uh, oval, drawing it exactly like this, I am going to duplicate this once more. So Control D. Here is my second eye shadow. And um, as you can see, they're not facing the same direction. So we're going to do another technique to sort of flip it. Uh, so if we select this second object, the second eye, and we go to, where is it? Here it is. So under object, in the object menu at the top, you'll see uh, the ability to rotate and flip. Um, so this one, actually rotating would, would work in this example. We can also flip it horizontally. And as you see, it will be almost like a perfect mirror of that first eye there. All right. Now, let's do the beady little eyes. So I'm going to draw a little circle. Oh, actually, you know what? I'm going to draw it right on the eye here. Again, you can always move it if you need. Now, this is a little small, and those markers are actually very tiny. So uh, sometimes you might need to get a little bit closer to your designs. Um, I like to use keyboard shortcuts. So if I do Control Plus, oops, actually Control, and then the wheel of my mouse, or if you use your um, your touchpad and you scroll forward, it'll zoom in. Okay, you can also go View, Zoom, Zoom in. Uh, that'll also allow you to get a little bit closer. All right, so now that I'm a little bit closer, um, I'm going to change this scary red eye to a nice, peaceful, clear white eye here. And actually, I'm going to zoom out a little bit again. All right, and here. So here's eye one. I can duplicate that again. Here's eye two. almost looking like a panda now the nose and the mouth so the nose in this example is a uh, oval I'm gonna do a different shape for mine actually so I'm gonna go to the uh, stars and polygons uh, tool here um, now when you click on that sh tool shape you're gonna notice at the top uh, there's different um, uh, options that we can modify these shapes with. So corners, how many stars is this uh, star going to have? How many corners? Um, so in terms of points, I'm actually going to make that three. And then the spoke ratio and rounded, I'll show you what those do in a second. But first, I'm just going to start by drawing a star. Oopsies. All right, well, we'll get the exact shape and size in a second. But... Um, three corners so as you see this star has one two three points they're a bit rounded and that's what uh, these two numbers at the top will allow you to adjust so okay because I don't want this to be pointed and I'll show you why in a second I want to be a little bit rounded but um, okay and then rounded all right so I'm just gonna start with this basic shape and we can always use these uh, numbers to modify it later. Um, I'm going to change the color to black in the inside. Uh -oh. What do I do? Fill. And then we'll go to move the circle to black here. Okay, so this nose, I'm actually going to... I'm going to scale it a little bit. I'm going to flatten it. It's almost like a triangular nose. I don't know. I don't know why I think of bear noses like this, but something like that. That'll pass as a bear nose. All right, so I'm going to put it right here. And what else does this have? Uh, a mouth. All right. So for the mouth, um, we can use an arc. We can use some curve tools for that. Um, I'm actually going to use the text tool again since they kind of look like J's. Right, so I'm going to 
draw a capital letter J here. Um, so when you're dealing with text tools again at the top, um, we have the options to change the size. So point is the size. So whoops, that's a little too big for my box. So all right, so 144 is too big. Let's see. And not quite. Well, let's stay with that size and let's see if there's a different font that works better. So uh, let's see. Depending on the font, my J might look a little different. So Arial. All right, let's let's try Arial. So now I have one J here, and uh, but just like the shapes that you make, lettering uh, can also be scaled and and um, sort of morph and adjusted by these. Uh, these arrows here. So I'm going to start by making one mouth or part of its mouth, half mouth. I don't know what it is or why it's attached to its nose. My mouth's not attached to its nose. But then again, I'm not a bear. So, all right. So let's see. I digress. Here is mouth one. All right. And if moving it around with your mouse or cursor is a, or with your mouse, yeah, or, or trackpad's a little tricky. You can also use the uh, arrows on your keyboard to nudge it around a little bit as well. Um, so that's what I'm doing now, just to get it in the right spot. That looks good. Uh, after I have one shape uh, or that I like in position, I'm going to duplicate it, just like I did for the other parts. So Control D. Um, Again, if you duplicate it, it'll place a copy right on top of that other one. Uh, after duplicating it, I'm going to, uh, we're going to flip it. Uh, we're going to sort of mirror it like we did with the eye before. Uh, so I'm going to flip this shape horizontally. And then with my arrows again on my keyboard, I'm just going to nudge it to the right. Nudge, 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 nudge. Kind of. Let's let's see if I can get these to move together. So you can see my mouth is a little off center. Um, so let's say I want to move both of these shapes together, um, so that I don't have to do you know each one at one time. So uh, if I take this one half of the mouth and then I shift click on the other half, it's going to uh, select both of those objects at the same time and uh, again with my arrows on my keyboard I'm just gonna move these into place and that looks a bit more centered I kinda like mine better actually go away sample panda uh, delete okay uh, let's see let's see what else uh, final touches for this panda will be um, Actually, he's pretty perfect. So last thing I'm going to do actually is uh, I'm going to highlight it because with this panda, we didn't do much uh, in terms of true sizing. Um, let's say this was to eventually translate onto a bookmark. It might be too big. It might be too small. Um, but again, since we're dealing in vectors, we can size this without uh, losing any shape. Um, but one thing we want to do before... Uh, we move anything around or size anything is we want to group these objects because everything is, uh, is sort of independent right now. So if I accidentally click on a shape or a part, uh, it might accidentally move. So I'm going to undo and uh, show you how to group your final pieces together. All right, so if I draw a box, if I highlight everything, you can also do uh, Control A, Select All. Um, but after everything is highlighted and selected, uh, you can right click and you can go to group, which is in the menu at the bottom, or you can also uh, go to the drop down menu and under object will be the, uh, the option to also group. So uh, after hitting group, and now that I try and move the object around, you'll see that it is one fully formed panda head um, moving around. And if I try and scale it, I can pancake it. I can get make it a long-headed panda, a wide-headed panda. All right, very versatile. But again, everything stays in place. Everything um, 
uh, scales without losing any resolution or distortion because they're uh, vectors. So here's my panda. So um, I hope you can use some of these tools that I just showed you in your very own creations. Um, you know, think about any uh, characters or animals, anything, any object, anything you might want to uh, recreate or redesign using these tools um, and see what you come up with. So I hope you have fun designing and creating. Uh, next week I will introduce new tools and techniques for making uh, these illustrations and then eventually we will pew, 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 laser etch these into our bookmarks. Uh, have fun, everyone. Enjoy. And until next week, this is Mr. Charles out.